Welcome back to Station It Is. And it seems a condition is affixed. Look, the arrow is pointing the correct way. It's not sideways, but it's not 45 degrees. So hopefully that means they're fixed. And that sort of means I probably want to take a look at this again. Because we tried with <laughs> with this rather... Oh. Only problem is, uh, by the way, I also created this uh, backpack. Has lots of extra suit, uh, suit space, uh, well, backpack space, like we did last episode. Uh, I did it right at the very end of the episode, so you may have missed it. It was after my sort of flex of grab share kind of section. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the problem with it is if you put a um, if you put a, a portable light in the backpack, you'll see how it's creating all kinds of weird shadows. Let me just go to the front of this. This see weird shadows now. <laughs> so. Hmm, I'm not sure whether I can stand that or not. Uh, I'll, I'll try it for this episode, and if I can't stand it anymore, I will have to revert that change. Uh, so what have we got here? Temperature and pressure is nil. Okay, so that is fine. Let me just get into this room, and then let's see what we can actually do this episode. So, um, yeah, we're just filling it with atmosphere. Right. So if you remember last episode, I had this rather, shall we say interesting setup of using an active vent to evacuate the hot gas from around the, the gas fuel generator. It's not really very good. So what I kind of like to do is, um, if possible, I, I've put this other vent alongside just because we want to do uh, maybe a second setup for that. If possible, I'd like to just open this up a little bit. And then behind here, I want to set up a air conditioning unit, hopefully. And I may need to print off. So let me just start printing off some more uh, cable coil before we actually get to that part. We're going to need the uh, normal kind. Cable coil. There we go. Start printing. It'll print off loads. That's not a problem. So yes, uh, well, there we go. We've got detected the atmosphere now. So, um, yes, well, let's put the air conditioning unit over the back. And then somewhere back here, we want to put an output. Now, a few things with the air conditioning unit when it's actually working. One, it consumes a lot of power, which is fair enough. There's no, there's no real issue with that. Number two, it, um, if you don't put anything in the waste pipe section of it, it will fill the waste pipe section with whatever you're feeding in. And in this case, rather than trying to fill it with pollutant, um, if it just fills with carbon dioxide and whatever the rest of the atmosphere is, I don't care that much, I don't think. Um, I think we should be okay with that. Um, and if we need to get more efficiency, we'll put uh, some yeah, we'll put some uh, pollutant in there. But for the moment, I just want to see whether this can keep up with this system. Now, if we have the input in here, it's going to be very hot. The input's going to get dragged into the air conditioner, get cooled, and probably return to this room, I think, because after a certain point, we want to just keep it circulating. Now that mean, might mean bringing up this room to quite a high pressure, which is why these windows may not be so good longer term, but I'll try and do that. I've got some recommendations for a passive cooling system from Eric in the comments, who's saying that you probably need something like 18 radiators and 100 to 200 kPa in here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know about that. So let me first of all just set up the air conditioner and we'll see how well that does at this job. And if it doesn't, then hey, what the heck, we can have a look at some alternative cooling systems. Okay, so I've got a passive vent now here, right next to it, and the other passive vent is up here. So here's going to be the input to our air conditioning system. Here's going to be the return line, and hopefully we'll keep this entire space cool. We'll see how much it takes to do that. So here we're just going to run a, uh, a pipe then just at the back. Um, I want to run a corner. Yep, obviously it's getting quite spaghettified in here at the moment, so I just want to get this to a place where we can run this. So that's our fuel input pipe, so we don't want to get in the way of that. However, this one should be able to uh, yep, run out this way. And we'll run it right to the very end. That might obstruct the controls in a second, but uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to get to them. Uh, we'll have to come out past this cable, unfortunately, but that's that's okay. And I'm at a pipe. Do I have any more? Oh, I do have some more. Good. Let's just get the rest of that. Uh, 
and auto place and that should be connected we're also going to have a waste pipe that we need to deal with so if we just have that for the moment um coming out to yeah we probably want to put some radiators out here or we can try and re reuse this waste by sending it over to our hot room as well that's perhaps for another day but for the moment i'm just going to set, put some uh, some pipes up here send them towards the wall and we'll worry about radiators a little bit later let's just get to the wall There we go. That'll probably be a, a three-way corner or something along those lines. Okay, so um, let's take a quick look at this. Um, do I have enough power for it, first of all? It is daytime, but... Yep, and it starts up, which is a good sign. Of course, it's not on at the moment, but that's perfectly fine too. Uh, notice on the back side of this, the power from this is coming all the way from here, which is coming straight from the front of our batteries. We're not trying to run it on the rest of the basis systems. However, the data we are going to have to run to the basis systems because we're going to need to address them some other way. So let's just get some more cable. And we will be able to run this directly out, I think, and then just straight down. So it's getting a bit weird with the selection of that again. There we go. Down. Come on. And straight and then we'll just curve it around yeah that's fine and we just need a t-junction replacement here so let's just clip that off okay i think we're ready we have should have everything we need for the air conditioner and we can actually run this without having to do everything else. So let's just get up here for a second. And if I just weld this back up, I'm just going to on. Let's go and quick take a quick look over the other side. Hopefully everything should now be uh, accessible. We're probably just going to need to put the glass sheet in again. Where did I put that glass sheet? That's a tank. It's in my backpack. There's got to be a glass sheet. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> Doesn't see unless you do that. Okay. All right. So temperature. Um, let's just turn on the systems for what is it now? What are you? You are lever to the wall heater. You're a lever to the gas fuel generator. We want this to pressurize. So let's just turn on our filtration unit. And we're going to be bringing up our pressure probably to more than we previously had. Remember now that uh, one thing I'm going to have to turn off is a system that is going to turn the active vent on and off all the time. So is that this one? Uh, it's the writer. Gas fuel generator? Nope, that's not it. It's got to be this one then. Logic writer. Right to the active vent. Yep, yeah, can just turn that off. So now the active vent system is off. This system is 15 degrees, and we're building up pressure in there slowly. Our batteries are sort of low, mm. so why don't we try and see if we can activate this. We're probably going to want the wall heater on, so let's just turn it on, just to get it up to an accessible temperature to start with. And then once it is, we're going to have, until we've got some electronics controlling this, I'm going to turn on the air conditioner, and that will start using up power like crazy. And... Um, We'll leave it on while we're doing testing to see if it can keep up because all we need to do if we can leave it on is to uh, have you know whatever writer we have here that's turning on the gas generator also turn on the so we'll write to a value instead of a logic writer and we'll use two writers then one to write to the gas fuel generator to turn on and one to turn on the air conditioner at the same time ideally so that is pretty much fine so let's turn off the and yeah, these shadows are annoying me <laughs> <laughs> they really are annoying me. So why don't I just turn on this light as well? Uh, is that a little bit better? Maybe. So we've got 20 degrees in there. Cool. And we've got some atmosphere. Although what's going to happen is when I turn this on, it's probably going to drag all this atmosphere into the waste pipe. But let's give it a go anyway. So let's just turn you on. 
and you're on, good. And that should be regulating this. You'll see it's already dropping. But is that dropping because it's putting it stuff into the waste pipe? Let's just take a look at the waste pipe. Uh, where is our tablet and the waste pipe? Yeah, so that's pressurized it up to 101 kPa, which is what I was kind of expecting. I thought it might go up to a 200, but uh, 100 is fine. And you'll see at the moment that's dropping, but that's that shouldn't be the case for very much longer. Let's, uh, let's turn that back off again. Okay, so it's going to need to re fill or reheat this so let's just open this up 16 degrees uh is this showing up now uh i almost want it on this link don't i uh, if i put the network analyzer to use let's see what it actually consumes for the network um let's have a look air conditioner is using 370 watts at the moment that's good that's not six kilowatts, so it'll depend on the, the probably the, the difference between them. I can actually cope with an air conditioner that's 360 watts. That's not too bad. Okay, well, it is at the moment. Let's, uh, oops, did I turn it off? I did. All right, are you up to, up to temperature? Nearly. And this, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, to be honest, because it's minus 140, so I would like to use it for cooling somewhere. Oh, it's actually dropped. It's heated up probably because of this sun. So we got CO2 in here. Pretty much just, uh, um, yeah, just CO2 and some pollutants. And Eric also in the comments did say that the pollutant is apparently called chlorine in the game's files. How we get chlorine from hydrogen and oxygen, who knows? Um, some strange fusion going on. Um, in any case, uh, yeah, so we've got pollutant in here. We could filter the pollutant back out of this output and back around into the waste pipe. That might be one option. And the CO2, of course, we've got plenty of spare there. So yeah, what we do with that is up to us. And the obviously the, <laughs> the air conditioner outside is driving this back down again. Okay, so maybe we should up that to something higher. Can we actually set this with the rename tool? The labeler? Can we re can we relabel? Uh is it out of batteries? Ah, oh, it's out of batteries. Yeah, empty. Let's go and grab another battery. There we go. Will you turn on now? Yeah, that's good. I want to rename the air conditioner. I want to set the value. Will you let me? Nope. Fail. <laughs> Yeah, it would be nice if it was consistent. Uh, so how do I do this to one degree increments? Um, no. No. Nope, it doesn't seem like I'd actually set that to one degree increments without some kind of dial or electronics. That's a shame. Let's set it to 30 for the moment. And I can set it back down to 20, I guess, once it's done that. So um, you should be gradually getting better. If it's all connected. Yeah. Okay. So let's turn off you. And let's see if this thing will turn on. So turn on the gas generator. And temperature is interesting. The air conditioner can keep up. It's keeping down to 43 degrees, but oh, maybe it can't keep up. <laughs> this turned off again. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Let's let's turn it on with the the always on logic then, shall we? Let's flip that off and flip this on. And all right, let's see what happens. Ninety degrees, hundred degrees, it's off. I should flip it back on again. Okay, it's not quite as violent anymore, but it's still being turned off. And then back on again, of course. So obviously the power required is 12 megawatts there. Uh, we are supplying, uh, yeah, 12.8 megawatts. Okay, I think I'm gonna to need to pressurize this a little bit more. Um, you'll see that air conditioner is not able to keep up with this on at the moment. So let's turn that off. Is that to do with the gas in the waste pipe being super hot? I wonder, let's have a look at that as well. 
yeah, that's 300 degrees already. So we're going to need some way of cooling that down. That's going to be radiators, I think, unless we can do something else. Hmm, one second. Okay, I've tried a few other things, and without spending an awful lot of resources in huge and huge amounts of radiators to try and pepper the inside of this with a radiator with another cold room at the back, I don't see any economical way that's any better than this active vent. Now, this active vent is a little bit way, uh, strange in that it's it's sort of exploiting um, the, the way the game works in that it's only calculating once every second or so. You'll, so you'll see this thing starts to heat up, takes a delay before it realizes, hey, the atmosphere isn't good enough. And of course, at that point, we're pumping all the hot air out so it can restart again because of permanent filter. I haven't found any better way than this. And if someone finds a better way, feel free to post an image online. More than happy to hear it if you can run it permanently. That said, this is running at a duty cycle of around 50%, I'd say. Yeah, about 50%, i.e. on 50% of the time, off 50% of the time. It strikes me that we could probably just put another one in there and we get basically the power of one of them by running two. I know that seems an odd thing to do, but given that this actually works fine, uh, we may need, an, obviously, another filtration unit. Uh, the active vent is probably more than good enough, but we'll see about that. We may want to put another one into this block space. But if we need more power than this, and I don't at the moment, uh, this actually keeps things charged, I think. Let's have a look uh, how much is actually producing. Um, let's have a look. It should come on and off. Yeah. In fact, we're probably best actually seeing with the uh, the network, aren't we? Network analyzer. So let's just get that on and take a look at this. Now if we scroll down to the bottom, well, if I would need to scroll down to the bottom, we can just point at this. Yeah, so you see it is coming on and showing up there. So we're getting 21.6 every every second and a half or every two seconds and that is charging the batteries I think or maybe slowly depleting because I've got the heating set up on but uh, I'm just going to leave that on in the background and we'll see if that's able to keep up with the heating setup which is all the way over there and uh, yeah let's give that a go while I'm looking at some kind of way to decide when to turn this thing on assuming that it actually provides us enough power so to do that I've put a few more readers out, one for each of these bottom batteries. I'm going to put another one, say, uh, say here for the top ones. That might be... Do we need to go any further? No, I don't think we do. I think we can come back in one, one there. Um, let's just put that away for a second. And we'll get this set up. So, for this, you're going to need a few readers, obviously, because of that problem we encountered last episode with not being able to just address these readers uh, I'm not going to address these batteries as kind of one big unit with a batch reader or something. So we've got logic readers and then we should probably be able to put another one there. This is going to batch read, I think. And then we're going to have to connect things up, which means I'm going to need heavy cable, which these should have been printing out, I think. Yeah, too much heavy cable. Well, you can never have too much cable, but uh, I've got a, a couple of stacks of 50 of... Uh, of the light cable uh, in the vending machine. It'd be nice to just have a, a stack of this available. Um, let's just stack that up. Yep, nearly a full stack. And then we're just going to hook all of this up together. So we're going to need a, uh, a few straights coming here and then four way junctions there and there, and then just three way junctions. Um, I'm going to need more up there. No, I can probably do the other way around, so that's fine. And then a four-way junction here. And the same here, I think. We've got a corner in there for now, although we may need to replace that. And then we can just rip out a couple of these. Uh, we're going to need to rip out there. That's going to need to be four-way. There we go. And same... Oh, we don't need a four-way there. We can need a just use a regular junction. And the same thing back here. And let's leave that, leave that as a corner for now. 
Is that everything? Maybe one more straight piece or a junction. And a corner for now. Right, so what are we doing with this thing? We're going to be, I've renamed these already, so if I just grab our rename tool, you'll see what I mean. Bat 4, Bat 5, 1, 2, and 3, etc. And they will let us address things with these logic readers. So we'll just accompany each of these three readers with these batteries, these two with those batteries, etc. And everything should be good. So I uh, won't show all of it, but by, uh, in brief... Oh, <laughs> need to connect that up. I always forget one of these things. There we go. Have I got all the others connected? No, not that one as well. There we go. Now we should be. Okay, so let's try that. Let's try that again. So yeah, we're just going to address uh, bat one, and we want the. Was the ratio? I think it was the ratio. Yo. Oh, yet again, I forget one. You know, one of these times. I was wondering why there was no power coming through. Uh, three. Yeah, that should do it. He says again. There we go. So 0 0.89 is the ratio of that one. And this one is 0 0.58. Good. And then this one should be, if I just change it. Battery three, turn it on. Grab the ratio. Yep, yeah, 0 0.15. Good. That's all the stuff we, we want. So I'm going to set these other two off camera and then we'll have a look at this batch reader and see if it can read them all. And this is pretty annoying. Um, the batch reader can't access all of them either. So neither the black the batch uh, reader previously trying to access the battery's values, the ratio, uh, can't sum them. Neither can this. So if I set maximum, uh, I can't actually set the to read from the logic readers i can set them on this side but i can't set anything that is actually useful see nothing nothing doing really and again with average or anything like that so it's gonna have to be processors i was hoping not to have to use them i was hoping there'd be some way of doing this maybe i'm just being silly uh which is entirely possible but i was hoping not to have to to do that but uh we can get a few processors and we can obviously use those to do it, so that's not not a problem. It's just uh, slightly annoying that you will have to use, uh, I want to say, uh, you know, batteries minus one number of processors, because you're going to have to add all this stuff up, and adding is fine, but um, it only adds two values at once rather than just summing, unless there is... I don't think there's anything else we can use. Um, so logic reader, batch slot reader... I don't think that counts as a slot, but we can try anyway. Um, let's look at the logic readers. And there's no slots available, so we can't actually use that. That's that one out. All right, so this seems a little crazy to have to do this, but it works. Um, so we've got the the BR1 through BR5 logic readers now. And we've got a sum 1, 2. So this is summing BR1 and BR2. This one is summing the previous math unit. So sum 1, 2 plus 3, 1, 2, 3 plus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 5. So in here we've got 4.9. And it's uh, we can see the exact value now. You see it's going down. And we should get an injection. Yeah, there's the injection from the gas generator. So it is maybe slowly decreasing, but it is at night time. So, you know, we've got to allow for that. So during daytime, we may well get a time where we don't need this on. Good, because I don't have to keep mining. So from that, let's just uh, get, me this, get this floor rating back down again. Um, so I can walk, whoop, that's going to annoy me. I'm going to have to rotate that later. So, um, no, I'm going to have to rotate it now. <laughs> that's going to just... Okay, and that's the way the floor grating just apparently works sometimes. In any case, we've then got a memory value, so we're going to choose 2, and that is potentially, you know, 40%. And from that, we can then do a compare, so we can just grab some cable. 
And let me just hook this up on this corner. And I'm probably going to want to put something that way. So let me just hook that that way. Up. And we're going to want some power for this. Because if you have a look here, one important thing is that uh, up to this point, we've been using this raw network that's near the batteries um, until this point, at which point we can just get a regular cable out because we don't need to address anything previous from that point onwards. And we can compare it to the logic memory too and then hook it up to this, but it does need power. So we just need to just uh, snip here and we can connect up there. There we go. So now this should be able to address all the previous stuff. So we want to probably rename, oh, we can get that. We just want to rename that maybe. So um, battery low value or something like that. Minimum mm, battery trigger. Yeah, let's call it that. Put that away. Just so we can use it from this. So we can compare it whenever the, this some one, three, four, five. So let's just grab the U. Should be in here somewhere. Some one, three, four, five is less than, um, what do we call it? Battery trigger. There we go. On. So right now it isn't. So essentially this should be the value that we use over here for the this to read, read from. So we want this always on the circuit potentially, but we also want to combine it with this. So we probably want an and there. So uh, we'll probably want to do a math of this compare unit plus, um, plus this output, I think. What are you reading from? The invert button, which is this. So this select unit, we want to read and and it with that over there and we're not, not too far away now so we just need a couple more things we need the another math processor and that's pretty much it i think yeah just a lot more cable let me just go and build a processor and uh that should be fine um in fact we're coming up on this being full so that's good let me just also quickly check how much fuel is it using so our fuel tanks up here, if you remember. Whoops. Um, not that much. Let me just point downwards so you can see that a little bit better. Yeah, hardly any. Yeah, there you can see the mole just dropped by one. So that's really quite efficient as far as that's concerned. I'm a lot less concerned about actually mining when uh, when it's that slow a uh, a production to keep this thing recharged. So, uh, oops, uh, I may have a few processors. <laughs> uh, let's turn you off. <laughs> well, three, four. Okay. Fine. So then we can just probably put a math here. And we want to add the two, don't we? Then, ooh, ooh, actually, we're going to need to compare. What's, com what's proportion, is it? Out of range, 499? What? is that oh air tank okay fine i need to go and refill my air one second okay here we go so we want to know um let's say bat low uh and invert uh in fact no that's battery low plus invert not and invert okay so we're going to take this now that I've got some air to breathe, uh, we're going to take this battery low compare unit. So is the sum less than two? And we're going to take the uh, battery low. So we need a screwdriver. There we go. Battery low. We're going to add it to, and we need the input of the invert button, I think. Yep. Yeah. So if we have a look through here, we should be able to find it. Although it may actually, ah, oh, there it is. So let's turn you on. And you're currently one, so the invert button's on, but the, the battery is not low. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to get this compare unit, and we're going to compare bat low plus invert. Hopefully it'll be in here soon. Now this is why if I end up needing like a drop-down button, alphabetical drop-down button, bat low plus invert 
equals and then we'll use that same true because I said it's two remember it's just handy to save one battery one one uh, logic memory just by uh, comparing it to that trigger so um, this will be essentially the and battery trigger equals and no it isn't so then we just want to take that so this is the uh, oops let's uh, rename you Turn gas gen on. And then we want to set this logic writer to use that. So turn gas gen on. Zero. So now that should shut down our system. And it has. And now it's only going to re-enable when this thing dr uh, drops to 40%. We don't need any outputs or anything like that. It'll automatically manage itself. As long, well, uh, if you didn't want to use 40%, then you're going to need another memory unit, but you can just put one right there, etc. It's not really all that much of an expenditure, but uh, it just does mean that we can uh, turn on this battery, uh, this sort of battery refilling system whenever we like now. Um, it'll work perfectly well automatically. And I guess the only thing maybe is to shut that off at the same time. Um, yeah, or rather we're going to need to turn it on at the same time, maybe, that that's probably the best thing. And we're probably going to need another writer for that, but that, that shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, is that actually hooked up to the same network? As far as the power is concerned, it goes down into that block, doesn't it? Where is it actually? I assume it's in the same network. Can we see the filtration unit? Hmm. Let me get another, do I have another right? Oh, I actually have a spare. <laughs> have a spare. Let's just get this connected somewhere. Uh, actually, it'll do right here. So we want it as a logic writer. Yeah. For some reason, you have to put it on the floor sometimes to get this to actually decide. It will help you by hooking things up. And then we can just hook up this into this corner. Uh, no, that's not the way I want to turn this. It's deciding, hey, that's the only that's the only valid way to turn. It's not. That is also valid. Um, and that should be fine. So if we turn this on, then we want to read, turn gas gen on. That's a no. And then we want to find the filtration unit if it's in here. So let's see if I can find it. Um, filtration. And the on setting. So that should have turned it off. No. <laughs> what have I chosen? Filtration? Have I chosen a different filtration unit? Uh, let's let's actually solve that properly. Let's just uh, get the rename tool and rename this something else. Uh, gas gen filtration. This may as well just be called a pump for that. All that matters. And let's see if I can actually select it in this list. And I was selecting the right filtration unit. If I just turn this back on again for a second, uh, this is set to gas gen filtration on setting, but because it's not changing a value, maybe it has problems. Although even if I turn it on, uh, yeah, if I turn this off and back on again, it's it's still not doing anything. So if we just set it to a different value, maybe so uh, battery low, that'll be zero as well. So uh, this is that two. If I change this to something but that requires one again, will you now work? So let's see if I can find the uh, the item again that we want. Can I turn gas gen on? Yep, there we go. So that's fine. It's just the thing that uh, that happens when you don't change the value. It, it won't change the setting of something that's uh, actually running. So this is all now essentially automatic. Whenever that gets low, it'll turn the filtration system on. It'll turn the gas gen on and uh, will slowly recharge. Of course, even now, with this set to full, um, my heating system's still on. So it seems to be okay so far. I'll keep an eye on it. And if you can think of better cooling systems, and by better I mean something that cools either with less power or um, more consistently to keep this thing on, 
feel free to put them in the comments. Now, I know a lot of you have put comments in already. That's probably for me to look at next episode because I was recording part of this while those comments were still coming in. So if you've made lots of comments, please don't annoy me on this one. Well, not annoy me. Please don't nag me on this one. Uh, nag me on the next one because I'll have read them all by then and uh, we'll see how well that actually goes. But that same system we did in the first one seems to work fine, just on a lower duty cycle. So, automatic refill of our batteries by a gas generator. Next episode, I'm going to probably fill in more of this roof, get some more lights over there. Now that we've got these weird shadows from my backpack, I think I'm going to have to just light up the whole base because uh, I want the extra storage space in this backpack, but I don't want the problem of having to uh, see all these shadows. So, yeah, I will have to deal with that next episode. So until then, uh, as always, guys, feel free to like, subscribe, share if you uh, like the episode. We've got an automatic recharging system. I quite like it anyway. And um, we'll see you next episode for some more Stationers. As always, guys, thanks for watching.